Anything for the office this morning? I think we're good. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Thanks. All right, let's open up to page 387. Um, we were very sparse with students on Friday. Um, I think out of the 105 that I see throughout the day, I only had 55 students. So that was averaging about six students per class. Now, we did continue in here. So we did finish the last section. For those of you that weren't here on Friday, I would recommend viewing uh, the video from class on my teacher page. But what we do today is going to be very related to what we did on Friday. So um, there's not going to be too much or information that you've lost because we're going to do a lot of it today. All right. So on page 387, we're going to continue talking about trig. We're going to try to uh, find trig values today. So if we know one trig value, can we figure out what the other five are? Um, because we have talked about six trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, and then there are three reciprocals. And um, perhaps utilizing the unit circle again can help us with that. Remember, the unit circle is really important. I, hopefully you're looking at it every day um, because eventually we're going to have to know uh, these values. Not all of them, okay, because I know it can be kind of overwhelming, um, but at least the first quadrant. And we'll talk about that closer to kind of um, test day. But unit circle, really important. Start to look over it, okay? So uh, the first two we're going to go over kind of review, and they're going to lead us into the other ones that we're going to take a look at today. For each of the following angles, notice how one's in degrees, the other one's in radian. We're going to go ahead and draw what the angle would look like in standard position, find the reference angle, and some coterminal angles. Okay, vocabulary we're familiar with and some uh, characteristics that we found with angles in the past. So let's just go ahead and try these kind of as a review. We'll go ahead and draw our axi or axis. How might you want to draw a negative 473 degree angle? Can you describe what that might look like? How you might draw it? Yeah? Okay, can you tell me where we start? You would start um, at zero, so the right. The right side, okay. All right, so if we go one full circle, that's 360. If we go another 90, we're at 450, and we want to get to 473. So we're going to get 23 more degrees. Looks like we'll be somewhere right there. All right, so we'll go ahead and draw in the terminal side, okay, AKA where the angle ends. Can we find the reference angle? Do you remember what a reference angle is by definition or describe it? Yeah. Okay, there we go. So the other angle, are you describing this one right here? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so the angle to the closest x-axis, it should be an acute angle, something less than 90 degrees. So let's see if we can figure out what that reference angle would be. We, have some, we might have to do some thinking about this. We said that we had to go 23 more degrees into that third quadrant. So it looks like the reference angle is the leftover. Yeah? 67, 67 degrees. Good. All right, there's our reference angle. So we drew it in standard position. We found the measure of the reference angle. Um, let's go ahead and try to find a positive coterminal angle and another negative coterminal angle. So what is another angle besides negative 473 degrees that would land in the same spot and have the same reference angle? Yeah. How'd you get that? Okay, so you're thinking about if you were to travel the other way. That's good. Okay, so what was your number again? 247? 
All right, let's see if we can get that. So um, Marie kind of approached this uh, at a different way. She's, she thought about, well, if she starts on this positive side, or uh, initial side rather, and traveled positively, she'd have to travel 180 degrees and then another 67. Okay, that's one way you can think about another coterminal angle. So she got 247. How have we found coterminal angles in the past? That would work. Another way, yeah. Add 360. We can add or subtract 360. Okay, so let's see. If we were to add 360 degrees, which is another rotation, I don't know if we're going to get 247 just yet. Okay, but maybe we'll come back to that. Negative 473 plus 360. What would this coterminal angle look like? Good, Marie? Negative 113. Okay, so it's still a negative angle, so this would be our negative coterminal angle. That would be if we started on this initial side and just traveled backwards to the blue terminal side. It's not like we go one full rotation, all right, but we're still landing in the same spot. Let's see um, if we can find that positive coterminal angle that Marie found, that 247. Notice how negative 113 is still negative. So let's go ahead and start with that angle and add another 360. That should take us out of some negative values. Do we get 247? There we go. All right, so there's a positive coterminal angle that Marie found before. So you could keep adding 360 to find other coterminal angles. You can keep subtracting 360 to find some negative coterminal angles. But remember, coterminals where they land in the same spot and they have the same reference angle. It just depends on how many rotations you want to do. All right, is that coming back to us? Good terminology and review? Okay, we're going to try to do the same thing, but this time working with a radian. How do you guys want to tackle this one? An angle of 13 pi over 7. Yeah? Do we want to convert it to a degree? Is that a little bit easier for us to do instead of keeping it as a radian? Okay, before we convert it to a degree, can we think about where this angle might land? How many radians are in a full circle? Instead of 360 degrees, how many radians were in a full circle? Yeah? 2 pi, okay, or the number 2, right, with a pi. Notice how this number with a pi is 13 over 7. Is that more or less than 2 if we think about our fractions? Go ahead. Yeah. Less than 2. Slightly less than 2, right? Because if it was 14 over 7, that would exactly be 2. So if this is slightly less than 2 pi, a.k.a. slightly less than a full circle, where do you think we would land? Can you guess the quadrant? Yeah? Four. Probably quadrant 4. Okay, well, at least we know where at least we know where we might be located. So let's go ahead and try to convert this to a degree. What's our conversion factor? If we want to change a radian into a degree, yeah? 180 over pi. 180 over pi, perfect. All right, so pi's are going to cancel. For those of us with calculators, we need 13 times 180 divided by 7. Do we get something weird, like 334.3, perhaps? OK. So you can have a decimal degree. That's OK. Let's go ahead and draw that angle. So we're going to start on the initial side, that right-hand side. It's a positive amount, so we'll travel counterclockwise. And notice how it's not exactly um, well, it's close to 360, but we don't go over that, so we're not doing a full circle. 
and we'll draw in the terminal side. All right, let's go ahead and try to figure out the reference angle, how far we are to the closest x-axis. That would be this little guy in there. Can we calculate it? Did you get it, Marie? Go ahead. Um, I got 25.7. You're, you're close, okay. 25.7. Okay, so that's the degree amount that we would have to go in order for us to complete that full circle. Okay, get back to that positive x-axis. Let's go ahead and convert this back to a radian. Remember, we started with a radian, so we're going to end with a radian for all of our values. It's nice that we know the degree amount, but let's go ahead and convert it. We'll have to multiply by pi over 180. All right, so I want to show you something. If we do our conversion, we have 25.7 divided by 180, and you math frack it, we're going to get 257 over 1800. That's kind of a crazy fraction, large values going on in there. So this is what we could represent as our um, reference angle in radians. But this is a little bit off, because isn't this value rounded? because this value was rounded, right? Okay, so you can write this. I'm not going to say that's wrong. It's pretty darn close, which is fine. But let's see if we can figure out the exact reference angle in radians. Okay, we said that a full circle was 2 pi, and the radian we were traveling was really, really close to 2 pi. How far off are we from 2 pi? What would we have to add to 13 over 7 to get 2? Yeah? 1 7th, or a.k.a. 1 7th pi. So we'll have a 1 pi over 7. If you were to check that, type in 1 divided by 7, notice how that decimal value is really, really close to the one that we found when we were converting it. Okay, so either one of these would be fine. If you want to write 257 over 1800 as your um, radian with a pi in it, that's okay. But notice how the exact reference angle would be pi over 7. Okay, if we were actually going to use the angle we started with, not some uh, decimal rounded value. Okay, so you could have multiple ones depending on what you wanted to work with in degrees and convert to radians or just keep it in radians. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if we can find some uh, coterminal angles. Let's try to keep these in, in uh, radians, though. We're not going to go ahead and convert it to degrees. Let's start with the 13 pi over 7, just like we started with the negative 473 in the last example. And instead of adding 360 every time, which would be a full circle, let's go ahead and add 2 pi. That's our full circle in radians. Now, a little tricky with this is because we have fractions to work with, so we've got to make sure we have our common denominator. Instead of adding 2 pi, we'd have to make sure that that has a denominator of 7, which would change the numerator to a 14 instead of that 2. So 13 pi plus 14 pi would give us 27 pi over 7. Okay, so there's a positive coterminal angle. Let's see if we can find a negative one. So instead of adding 2 pi, let's perhaps subtract the 2 pi. We'll take away a rotation. If we have 13 pi minus 14 pi, that will give us negative pi over 7. 
one positive, one negative. Good review? All right. Let's try the ones at the bottom. These are very similar to the ones that we did on Friday. So for those of us that weren't here, this is going to be a good um, kind of catch up for us. In each of the angles below, uh, determine the quadrant, like quadrant one, two, three, or four, or the axis, like x-axis, y-axis, that this particular angle might end on or terminate. So we don't really know what the angle measurement is. All we know are some trig values about that angle, like a cosine value that happens to be less than zero, aka negative, or a tangent value that's negative. If we know those trig values, where, where might this angle land? That's what we're gonna to try to figure out. So let's just go ahead and draw an axis, just as a visual, for us to help determine where this uh, angle might be. If the cosine of an angle is negative, where might the angle be located? Let's think about our unit circle. What variable does cosine represent again? All those coordinates or, or um, ordered pairs that we found on the unit circle, which one represented the cosine? Can I say it louder? The x value. Okay, so cosine is representing an x coordinate. On a graph, which quadrants have a negative x value? One, two, three, four. What's going on? Negative x's. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Two and three. All right, so let's go ahead and make note of that. Since cosine of theta is negative, x must be negative, and this happens in Q2 and Q3. All right, so we officially just narrowed down where this angle might be located. It's either in quadrant two or quadrant three. Let's go ahead and use the tangent information to help us figure out of those two, which one is the actual quadrant this axis is in, or not axis, this angle is in. How is tangent related to the variables on the unit circle? The x and y coordinates. You might have to look back, that's okay. Can we find it? How is tangent related to x and y? Yep. Y over x. Okay. There we go. So, Notice how tangent is a fraction. It's not simply just x or just y. So if it's a fraction, we have to take both of them into consideration because if a fraction is negative, the top value can be negative or the bottom value can be negative. Not both of them though, because we know a negative divided by negative would be a positive. So let's go ahead and think about this. If tangent is negative, which value is negative, y or x? In this example, or in this case, yeah, why? There we go. So no, we already set up here that x had to be negative. So in terms of our tangent relationship, the x would have to be negative. If we said the y value was negative, we would have a negative over a negative, which is no longer a negative value. So we already know that x is negative. Um, y over x, so we'll say since 
x is already negative, then y must be positive. Bless you. All right, so let's go back to our quadrants. We said that the only possibility so far would be quadrant two or quadrant three for this angle to be in. If the x is negative, and we just concluded that the y is positive, which quadrant are we in? Quadrant two or quadrant three? Yeah, there we go. So we'll say, I'll have to scoot this up. Therefore, theta, or the angle, is in quadrant two. For those of us that weren't here on Friday, we just did a bunch of examples like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and try another one. Um, cotangent of an angle is undefined and cosine of the angle is negative, okay, less than zero. Maybe you want to draw an axis just as a visual. All right, let's start with cotangent. How is cotangent related to the variables on the unit circle, aka x and y? Go to Rebecca. X over y. X over y. Okay, so before we said tangent was y over x, therefore cotangent, okay, the reciprocal would just be the flip of that x over y. So cotangent is undefined. If cotangent is a fraction, okay, we have x over y, what is going to make that fraction undefined? Yeah. Y, y must be zero. Okay, y equals zero in order to be undefined. Okay. So if we know the y value is zero, can you describe where we're located in a graphing coordinate picture? Where do we have a y value that's zero? Yeah? The, okay, so like the origin, definitely. Okay. Anywhere along that, exactly. So we are located somewhere, okay, on that x-axis that has a y value of zero. The question is, are we on the negative x-axis, meaning the left-hand side, or the positive x-axis, okay, the right-hand side. But at least we know our angle is landing somewhere on those two spots. Let's go ahead and use uh, the other piece. All right, so cosine of an angle is negative. Very similar to what we said over here. We can conclude that x is negative. So with those two pieces, can you describe where we're located? Are we on the left-hand side of the x-axis or the right-hand side of the x-axis? If x is negative, yeah, the left-hand side. All right, so therefore, theta is on, you could say the left-handed x-axis or the negative x-axis. Either one of those is fine. So you might not always land in a quadrant, okay, because we know if we travel 180 degrees, we're going to be on that negative x-axis. You can land on axes, okay, not just necessarily quadrants. We did okay so far? That's a good review from Friday. All right, so what we're going to try to do is merge these two concepts together to help us figure out some uh, trig values based on a particular point that we're given. Not necessarily a point on the unit circle. We're going to have a point to us or a point given to us that's in a coordinate or a graphing picture. So let's check this out. The terminal side, okay, the ending side of an angle alpha, okay, that's what the Greek letter alpha looks like, passes through the points below. Find the exact value, aka no decimals, of each of the six trig ratios. So sine, cosine, tangent, and their three reciprocals. Let's go ahead and first draw a graph. And we gotta think about where the point five comma negative three would be located. If you were to plot that point, where would it be? Yeah, the fourth quadrant. So um, we would go five on the x-axis and then negative three on the y. 
Okay, so we'll say we're somewhere right there. What we're going to do is draw in a reference triangle. Okay, we've talked about reference angles. Now we're going to draw a reference triangle. So if a reference angle is the closest angle to the x-axis, a reference triangle is a triangle drawn to the x-axis. So in this case, we'll go 5 to the right. We can label that 5. We go down negative 3, because that's what would get us to the point. And we're going to go ahead and draw the hypotenuse of this reference triangle from the center or the origin. There's our reference triangle. And we already know the uh, angle is named alpha, so we'll go ahead and perhaps label that angle as our reference angle. If this is a reference triangle, then the angle is the reference angle. So with that triangle, notice how it's a right triangle because we go five to the right and three down, we're gonna go ahead and try to figure out all six trig ratios for this particular triangle. We'll just go ahead and jot all of them down. All right, let's see if we can figure out sine. Think about Sokotoa, because we have our right triangle. For sine, we would need the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So in relation to this angle alpha, can we list what that opposite, opposite and hypotenuse side would be? Do we know the opposite side? Let's just start with that. What would the opposite side be? If you were drawing an arrow to the other side, looks like we get negative three. Do we know what the hypotenuse is? No, you see how that's the side we drew in from the origin to that dot? Okay, can we figure out what the hypotenuse is? Yeah. Let's go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem. All right, so we'll do five squared plus negative three squared, and we'll say that's c squared, okay, our hypotenuse. So we'll have 25 plus 9, which would be 34, and square root that, we'll get our hypotenuse. Okay, so we'll go ahead and label the square root of 34. Okay, we want exact values, so we're not going to type that in and get a decimal. Okay, we've got to keep, keep these as fractions or square roots. So our sine ratio, we have negative 3 over the square root of 34. We have a square root in the denominator. How can we get rid of it? Yeah. By the square root of 34. By the square root of 34, yep, on top and bottom. All right, so multiply straight across the top. We'll have negative 3 times the square root of 34. And down below, the square roots would cancel, so we're just left with a 34. There's our sine ratio. Maybe let's go ahead and try to tackle the reciprocal of sine. Since we already did sine, we can simply just flip it. Of the reciprocal ones, which one is the reciprocal of sine? We have cosecant, secant, or cotangent. Go, Rebecca. Secant. secant. There we go. All right, so secant is the reciprocal of sine. Okay, maybe we'll draw a little arrow to show that relationship. Now, what you could do is you could simply flip the final answer that you had, but notice how if you flip that final answer, won't you have a square root in the denominator? So you're going to have to get rid of it again. What if we were to use this first one that we developed? That's still a sine ratio. It's still opposite over hypotenuse. But if we flip this one, we won't have a square root in the denominator, which is good because then we won't have to get rid of it. So maybe we'll perhaps just flip this original one that we had. We would have negative square root of 34 over three. All 
All right, so we have two of the six done. Let's go ahead and try the other ones. Cosine, we need the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. In relation to our angle alpha, the adjacent would be five. And we know the hypotenuse is the square root of 34. But we have a square root in the denominator, so let's go ahead and get rid of it. So we'll have five square root of 34 over 34. Now that we have cosine, maybe we can tackle its reciprocal. That would be our cosecant. Again, you could flip your final answer, but you would have a square root in the denominator, so you'd have to get rid of it. Maybe you want to flip the previous one or the initial one that you had. So that would be the square root of 34 over 5. All right, let's try our last one. What about our tangent ratio for our, our reference triangle at the top? Think about Sokotoa. What do you think? Yeah? Say it again. It'd be negative three-fifths. Okay, so the opposite side, we have negative three. The adjacent side is five. So we'll have negative three over five. No square root in there, so that's perfect. We don't have to really worry about getting rid of it. And if we do the reciprocal, we would have negative five over three. All right, so what we're doing here is we're trying to figure out trig values um, of ordered pairs that are not necessarily on the unit circle. So we're not using the um, ordered pairs on the unit circle. We can still figure out what the ordered pair might be, though, or, or at least the trig values from that ordered pair. Let's go ahead and try another one. So this time theta passes through that particular point. Where would that point be located in a quadrant? Yeah? Quadrant three, all right, so we have to go left three, down two, somewhere, somewhere right there. And we're gonna form a triangle with the x-axis, AKA a reference triangle. So from the origin, we had to go left three, down negative two, and we'll connect that ordered pair with the origin. Okay, alpha is our reference angle, so it's the little one right next to the origin. Let's see if we can figure out these six trig values. Do you think it'd be in our best interest to figure out the hypotenuse first? We need that if you think about Sokotoa. So we'll do negative three squared plus negative two squared equals c squared. Uh, nine plus four. Looks like we'll get the square root of 13. Okay, that's our hypotenuse. Do you guys think you can go from there? Fill out the six trig ratios? I'll give you a few minutes and then we'll check them out.
All right, let's start with sine. Any takers? If you did the opposite over hypotenuse, yeah. Uh, over 13. So that's your final answer after you get rid of the square root in the denominator. How do we do? Speak now, forever hold your peace. We're good? All right, what about cosine? Yeah. All right, that's your final one after you got rid of the square root in the denominator. Still doing a thumbs up? Okay, tangent. Keep going, yeah. Two thirds. Two thirds, I like it. All right, let's tackle the reciprocals. What about cosecant? Yeah. I like it. Secant? Yeah? All right, and cotangent. Yeah. Three halves. How'd you do? Good to go? Perfect. All right. We're going to continue tomorrow uh, looking at some more examples of these. Not necessarily starting with an ordered pair, though. We're going to switch it up a bit. But we're still going to practice finding all these trig values, Okay, depending on where we're located and what quadrant and uh, what information we're trying to determine. Okay, But we'll end there for today.